What's up guys? I am outside of Fisher's Soccer Shack here in Calgary, Alberta. My buddy Matt owns this store. We're gonna go inside and he's gonna give you an expert opinion on what you should be looking for when you're picking cleats for yourself. This is my buddy Matt. This is his store. Thanks for having us, buddy. I appreciate it. He's already got some boots picked out for me. So we're gonna try some on and we're just gonna talk and I'm gonna ask them some questions, try to get that expert opinion on what you should be looking for when you're trying to get cleats for yourself. So what's the first one you got? Uh, we got the Nike Magista Ford and two lined up for you. Um, size nine and a half, dynamic cool. fit. So let's check that out. So first of all, my street shoes, I usually wear like a 10, but whenever I try on cleats, I try to go a little bit tighter, like a nine and a half. Do you think that, is that something that you should be doing yeah. when you're wearing cleats? For sure. Yeah, like every every shoe is a bit different. We'll talk about that in a bit. Like some boots are wider, some are more narrow, some are longer. So they they all fit a bit differently. But I usually find you want it a bit tighter because you don't want loose boots when you're playing. Correct. 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 Okay. So this first one, and what do you what did you call this? This is dynamic fit. This is called dynamic fit. This is a new fad. And honestly, we were talking about before. We really like it. Why do you think it's good? Like, it just locks you into the boot. So yeah, it's seamless from your lower foot to your upper foot. And it just makes you feel uh -huh. nice and snug. Yeah, like I don't know if it's a metal thing, but I feel like I'm more secure. Like my ankle's more secure, and I don't know, it just feels nice. So we'll try it on. The other thing I was gonna say is you should be wearing soccer socks when you're trying on soccer shoes, right? Don't 100%. be wearing your dress shoes. So he's got a big bucket here. I actually just came from training, so I got my stinky soccer socks on. But uh, oh. You want to take that out <laughs> but you want to be uh trying on your shoes with the socks that you actually wear so if you wear double socks when you play make sure you actually try it on when you get these boots so the only bad thing about these especially when you try them on for the first time is actually getting them on right yeah but once you uh break them in a bit it's a lot easier to slide on okay so these are nike magista Correct? Yeah, Nike Magista yeah. Warden 2 FG of Chrome Grass. And then, so I just want to ask, so what should I be looking for as far as like how much room should I have in my foot when I'm trying on my cleats? I think when you're trying on a synthetic shoe, you want to have about a pinky's room at the end. Uh -huh. So that's probably this a bit tight. a bit snug for you. So I would probably go with 10 to be honest. Maybe yeah. a half size up. Yeah. yeah. Um, again, depends on the individual and how you like them to fit but don't bite them too snug in a synthetic because they're not gonna stretch. As opposed to a leather? Yes, well they'll stretch a quarter of the yeah. size. So let, would I want this with like a leather, like almost my toes touching the front or? Close to there. Okay. So synthetic is not gonna, it's not gonna stretch, it's leather gonna, will. It will stretch more. Yeah. A synthetic will break in, but it's not gonna stretch in, in length. Cool, and what about like, as far as my foot? Like Nikes are pretty narrow, aren't they? Correct, to a point. So if I show you one other shoe comparison, Nike's gonna make four different styles of shoe. So you have a Mercurial, which is a narrower shoe, and you have a Magista, which is a wider shoe, and oh, okay. you have a Hyperventive as well. So there are three different fits. Okay. Even though they may all look similar. And um, should my foot, should I feel my foot on the side there like that, or? A little bit, again, it You want a little the bit of room. The width like, of your the width of your own foot is going to dictate that, yeah. whether or not the boot suits your foot. Mm -hmm. You don't want to buy something like where you're sliding over the edge and it's going to affect mm -hmm. your playing. So in all honesty, I think I have a, a bit of a wider foot compared to most people. So for the last couple of years, I've been struggling to wear Nikes because Nikes are pretty narrow. Agreed. But uh, so usually it would be like Adidas or like Puma or those pretty, uh, those are wider boots. Puma um, is predominantly narrow. Uh, Puma is. Yeah. Season coming, they do have a new product called the Net Fit. Which is an adjustable width boot. In Adidas, they're an average fit, so that might be more suited for you than okay. some of the Nike shoes. And a shoe, again, if we try a different shoe in the Nike, you might find that it feels completely different, even though it looks almost identical. This is a 10. This is a 10 in the hyper side on. Okay, so what we're getting at here is when you're picking out cleats, like, the most important thing is the comfort, it's the fit. And yeah, right away that feels way, way better. Yeah. So again, my feet should be able to breathe. Like this is a nine half, is this a 10 or is this, this, is a, 10. this is a 10? So this is this is my size. So what I'm trying to say here is, a lot of kids will go and they'll buy cleats and 
what they're really concerned about is the fanciest boot on the shelf or the one they've seen in the commercials, the one that their favorite professional player is wearing or all their teammates are wearing, when in reality that's not necessarily the boot that they should be buying. They need to be buying the boot that is going to help them perform best, correct? Yeah. And that shoe is going to be the one that fits the best and it doesn't pinch you in certain places. So obviously this boot isn't laced up or it doesn't have its laces in, but I can already tell that's a way better fit. So. When you're picking out your shoe, it's so important. It has to be comfortable. Yes? Yes. Like this one looks cool and I was I was into it, but right away I could feel it was too tight. And maybe if I went up a size, it would feel better. But So you said this is Magista and this is Material? This is Hypervenom. Hypervenom, yeah. So maybe Hypervenom is better for my specific foot. So it's so important. That's why like it's great that the internet allows you to buy shoes online, buy whatever you want online. But for me, I need to go into the store and I have to feel the, the cleat on my foot. Otherwise, I'm going to get it in the mail and it's it's not going to be the right fit and I'm wasting my money. And I'm just going to wear it because I bought it. So for me, I like to go into the store and and try it on. So important. Um, so let's try, a, let's try a different shoe. What do you got there? Sure. Um, so let's try a leather shoe for comparison. Okay. Something's going to be heavier for sure, but it's going to bolt here for more. And possibly be more comfortable overall experience. Yeah, That's the Puma King, just a kangaroo leather shoe. I used to wear these growing up, nice boots. Yeah, they are way heavier. Well, not way heavier, but noticeably heavier. Leather boots are going to be heavier, correct? Yes. But what's the benefit of a leather boot? A uh, leather shoe is going to stretch a little more to the almost natural shape of your foot. So maybe okay. you have something weird like a bunny, it's going to accommodate that. Uh, and that happens with a lot of players. So if you got weird shaped feet, you probably want leather, yes? Yes. Abnormally shaped feet, leather. And yeah, these are really comfortable. This is a 10, this is a 9.5. It's a 10. It's a 10. Okay, and again, I got a little bit of room on there. Um, can you talk to me about like pressure points? I know like a lot of uh, Nikes usually, they like pinch on the heel. You know what I mean? You probably ex experience that or you have lots of people complain about that. Like, it does depend on the shoe and where the heel is cut. Mm -hmm. um, always when you try a shoe on, you definitely want to stand up because your foot's going to spread out more. Um, so then we can see kind of where your pressure point should be. See, this is a good snug fit. It does have room to stretch a bit. Yep. So you might almost consider buying it a little smaller. Okay. Pressure point's going to be underneath. On the ball of my foot. All yeah. for sure. Yeah. And then again, the sides where you're pivoting side uh, to side. Uh, so like this is really comfortable. I know sometimes I'll put on a shoe or a cleat and right away I can feel like massive pinching like in the ball of my foot and like and uh, I don't know what do you call this uh, just outside of your foot so I'll feel like pinching right away and if you're already feeling that like it doesn't matter how cool it looks you're not gonna last 90 minutes that's for sure uh, let me try uh, what's that new balance it's new balance liberty edition shoe so this is you get that a crazy left and light shoe light man um, different edition by new balance everything on the shoe but it's white changes to green when it gets wet oh wow so kind of gimmicky but very very, very lightweight shoe uh -huh. so i am uh like i'm leaning towards the lighter boots these days i feel like it is noticeable you run it you feel a little lighter on your feet for sure yeah. as compared to the heavier leather boot but saying that like some of them aren't very comfortable correct wow. um and this one I can already feel like this is more comfortable. This is way lighter. It would be nicer to run in, but if I can't last 90 minutes, then that's something you need to think about. Um, so can you speak on that a bit? Like, is there some lighter shoes that are, or is there a way to make it more comfortable? Will they become more comfortable as they break in? They should break in a little yeah. bit. Uh, we usually don't recommend that you put on a brand new pair of synthetic shoes and go play 90 minutes in Okay. Uh, there's some tricks you can do, like just wearing around the house, juggling for a bit, half around here. So just let your foot adapt to the shoe a bit. So yeah, it's really it's way lighter, but I can already feel it pinching. But uh, so you're saying with synthetics, you're gonna get that way more than the leather, the more pinching. Yeah. Sure. And it will go away eventually if it's the right fit. It, it should, should go, go away. away. If it's the right fit. So don't go play a ninety in your brand new pair of shoes. So then in the other video, we were just talking about this before, I did another video, we went to the store, I tried out some cleats, and I checked it out on my channel, it's like, it's like over almost 3 million views right now, but uh, 
<laughs> in that video, I was like trying, I was juggling, I was like changing direction, like moving my feet, really testing out the shoes. And a lot of people were saying, hey, you can't do that in a store. But Matt's saying that's all good and you should do that before you buy cleats. Otherwise, how are you going to know how they feel when you play, correct? Yeah, you're going to wear these shoes for six months. Exactly. On the entire season. You're, you're going to invest like 250 bucks. You're going to wear it for a whole season. Make sure that they feel right when you change direction. And already I can feel this one is pinching the outside of my foot. So this one's probably not for me. This uh, Puma King feels really nice actually. So yeah, that's one thing I really look for is like changing direction. Because if it's not the right feet, you're or right fit, your feet are gonna slide, right? And that's usually where you get blisters. Is that true? Yeah. On the heels, on the sides of your feet. Sides of your feet and on your heels. So if it's not the right fit, if you're changing direction, you can feel your foot kind of shift a bit. You probably need a, a smaller size or a different boot. Okay. okay. And what's that last one you have there? Adidas. So what we have is the Adidas 17.1 Copa FG. So it is a kangaroo leather, but Adidas has made this considerably lighter by adding a sprint frame. Okay. Um, What's a sprint frame? Say, and a compression one-piece sock. So sprint frame is designed to be a little sturdier than the original Copa. The original Copa is a classic. They've made it since 1978. They've never changed it. Super popular boot. Which is a really good boot. Yeah. They're probably the heaviest boot on the market, Copa. I would say the heaviest, but so I'm going to give you the two boots and you're going to feel the difference right away as you're home. Oh yeah, it's way later. So this is a new 2017 version. Uh, these are usually big center backs wearing these boots, correct? But honestly, this, these last for like so long. Yes. I had a pair that probably last like five years. Yeah. So this is, I would say this is like the most durable boot that there is. I don't know if you, you're the expert. Yeah, this is one of the most popular. So shoes. if you want a boot that's going to last for a long time, Copa. Copa Mundial, yes. Copa Mundial, always buy at a half size small than you usually are. Because they stretch out? Correct. Well, they stretch yeah. and they come fitting a half size thing to start with. Can you talk about the synthetics? You were saying uh, some tricks to like, I guess boots in general, but some tricks to like make them, to break them in a bit before you actually play? Because a lot of kids are like buying their shoes and then they go out and play for three hours and 100%. their feet are bleeding. Um, synthetics, you've just got to break in by playing slowly. Yeah. Leather shoes, there's some tricks. Uh, you can put them on the counter in the bathroom, turn the shower on and steam them for say 10 minutes. Then put them on your shoe and lace them up and they'll really kind of mold to your foot. Wow. Okay, so again, steam. So just turn on the shower, oh, turn on the shower close the doors and leave yeah. your cleats in there. 10 for minutes. 10 minutes. And then time up and walk around the house a bit. For how, to, um, how do you lace these? Like that? Or either or. So okay. it's a two-way tongue, one for a classic look, or you can... Uh -huh. These are actually very comfortable. Yeah. These are Adidas what? Copa 17.1. Copa 17.1. These are actually really comfortable. So the biggest thing is always comfort. Like, honestly, those uh, New Balance, they look real flashy. Like he's saying, they turn colors, so that's what all the kids are interested in. But this, this basic black, which isn't as flashy, I can tell you right now, this is going to be a better boot for me because just the comfort. It feels like I'm honestly stepping on a pillow right now. And I wear the flashier boots. Like I said, personally, I have the uh, Nike Mercurials and the Proximos for indoor. And they are a little flashier, but the biggest thing with those is the comfort. They're still really comfortable shoes. Can you just um, talk a little bit about the blades, and, like the different cleats types? You know what I mean? For sure. On the bottoms? So. Like these are pretty basic. Show me some, uh, which are like those blade cuts. Do you know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. So we have a Nike. Yeah, exactly. A Nike with a blade. About three, four years ago, a blade everywhere was quite popular. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But then, due to uh, kind of a rise in knee injuries, they okay. most boots, even Nikes, have gone back now to a uh, just a pivot or uh -huh. a round or a stud. stud. If you have any knee knee injuries ever, you should always be playing in a round stud. Uh -huh. It just distributes the weight better, or what it's more it? just the pivot. So when you're in the grass, you're trying to pivot. Yeah, rotate your foot. It's not going to grip anything and catch anything. Um, is one better than the other? Not necessarily. Again, unless you've had a knee injury, you should be in a round stud. Okay, round that's a great piece of advice right there. I, because again, especially the newer boots that were coming out, they were kind of all going like that. Yeah, and I really liked the shoe, but I didn't necessarily like because I would feel it on those pressure points on all the blades. So that wasn't for me. I came back to these and that felt better. So another thing I want to 
just point out briefly is the different, uh, what do you call them, cuts or uh, the different soles. Different soles of the boots. So obviously you know uh, this is hard ground. Yeah, this is FG. From F HG for FG, well. F ground. So obviously it's your basic studs. Then there would be like a metal stud, six studs. For European and other places. Which you would call soft ground. SG. And that's, so we don't even sell them here because the ground is so hard in uh, Alberta. Is that pretty much the Correct. case? Yeah. But if you're on like a really lush green grass that's like super wet, you can slide tackle and do all the nice stuff, then you would wear a, a soft ground, which would be the studs. Correct. A little bit deeper of a stud. Yeah. Metal studs usually. Yeah. Often metal, yeah. And wh why do they have that? It's just a... Gives you better traction, Again, helps you cut. Better the wet. traction for sure because it's wet. It's not always going to be a metal, it's going to be a deeper version. Okay. Because a metal would add more weight. Uh -huh. So a lot of the new SG boots are still plastic or but they're deeper studs. And some shoes even have replaceable, don't they? You can do both? Some, yes. You guys don't carry those? Or? Again, we don't do uh, soft ground here, so you wouldn't. Most from the companies are more specific things now. Okay. I think that was a couple years ago they had. Yeah, the replaceable, you could go soft and you could go hard yes. with the little key, right? Yeah. Okay, so if you are playing on really nice green grass, maybe you're in the UK, it's raining all the time, that's when you would want a soft ground boot. Here, as we said, the ground is harder, so we would wear the firm ground. And you could even, on a lot of these fields, you could probably wear this turf boot, correct? 100%. Yeah. A lot of uh, older guys will find that easier on the lower back and hips, on okay. the hard ground. Uh -huh. um, and it can also cross over into a turf shoe. So they'd, even, they'd wear this on a normal grass pitch that is just really hard. Hard, as long as it's yeah. not raining out, uh -huh. it'll uh -huh. work out. So. so as you can see, there's just a bunch of little nibs, studs, mm -hmm. what do you call it? Yeah. Nibs. Yeah. And you could wear this on turf fields as well. Turf, grass, yeah. uh, court. Would you, wear, would you recommend this on turf or this? For like the most part, on an artificial turf. Artificial turf. You can still wear these. Yeah. This is what's actually designed for turf. Okay. And like you're saying, if you're having back pain or like your knees are really hurting after playing exactly it's it bands or your right yeah you would recommend trying that out it might it might help a lot possibly cool and then obviously indoor so what you were saying is if you find a, a cleat or a shoe that you really like so let's say this is proximal correct correct so you found it do they have proximal for outdoor yeah so yeah. The, the takedown is this um, material so material to material okay so let's say you were wearing the materials outdoor and you really liked them. Well, a lot of times you can get, you can even get a a uh, turf in the exact same, but different soles and the indoor as well. So if you find a, a cleat that's a really nice fit, that might be something you want to do. You can get the indoor version. You can get the artificial turf or hard ground version as well. So it's something to think about. So I got some nice cleats here. Thank you, material, correct? Hypervenom, sorry. But some nice shoes, and I just want to recap what we talked about in this video so you can make a better decision when you go to your store or come to this store, Fisher's Soccer Shack, and get some cleats for yourself. So first of all, when you come in, make sure you're actually wearing soccer socks. Don't come with your dress shoes or your dress socks because that's not where you're going to be playing in. You want it the same thickness, you want the same feel. So comfort is huge. Yes, it's okay to try the fanciest boot. It's okay to put on the Neymars, but if they hurt your feet, then you're not going to be able to play like Neymar. Okay, so really focus on that comfort. You want a little bit of wiggle room on your big toe, correct? Correct. Synthetics, you want more than leather. About a pinky. You want about a pinky on your synthetics because they're not going to stretch. The leather is going to stretch more so you can get a tighter fit on your leather boots. You don't want to feel a pinch on the ball of your feet or the sides of your feet. So if you're feeling a pinch right there, right away, those probably aren't going to last. If you're feeling a hard pinch in the back of your heel, that boot's probably not for you, correct? Yep. Okay. If you want to loosen them up a bit, like you said, get some steam on it, put them in the shower. You wear them in the shower? Or you wouldn't recommend it. wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. So you just want to get some nice steam on them and then wear them around the house. You don't want to buy synthetics and then go play for two hours the next day. Your feet will be hurting. You want to gradually build it up, get your feet used to them, and break them in a bit, correct? Cool. Uh, comfort is huge, like we said. When you're in the store, you actually want to try out the boots. So get some touches on the ball, see how it feels, play a few passes. You want to try a change of direction, cuts, okay? Because if you're cutting and your feet are slipping, that's really going to hurt you when you're playing in the game, especially when you're playing for 90 minutes. All those little cuts, all those little turns are going to add up, and it's going to really blister and hurt your feet. So other than that, we talked about the soles, 
firm ground, soft ground, hard ground. If you guys have any questions, just comment below. I'll do my best to answer them. If I need to ask Matt, I'll get his advice, his expert opinion, and answer them as well. So what Matt's going to do is he's going to give a 10% discount to anyone who mentions that they saw his soccer shack, Fisher Soccer Shack, here in Riverbend in Calgary, Alberta. If you mention that you saw this video on YouTube, he's going to give you a 10% discount on anything in the store. Is that correct? Correct. <laughs> all right, buddy. Well, thanks for having us. Hey, eh? Thanks for all the expert opinions, and I hope you guys found this valuable. I hope you use this information when you go and pick some cleats for yourself. Thanks for watching. Please remember to give me a like, share this video with your friends and teammates, and come back tomorrow for another training video. Talk to you real soon.